Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my August 2019 horoscope report for you. It is my intention with this video to give you the things that I think you need to know to help you make this the best month possible and learn some astrology while you're at it. Definitely go to my website, anniehelpsyou.com and see all of the resources I have there, including amazing new and full moon blogs to assist you in maximizing those power periods we have every month. If you are into how I teach and you wanna learn for personal or professional purposes, check out my astrology apprenticeship program, also on my website, anniehelpsyou.com. Go to RadicalPrayerBook.com to see my new book, which is an Amazon bestseller, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days, which has become a beloved favorite of my fellow spiritual seekers. So what's in the stars for you this month? I'm going to go into lots of details, so let's check them out now. Hello Leo friends, welcome to my August 2019 horoscope report for you. We have an incredibly exciting month. We are past the emotion, the heavy Mercury retrograde energy and water sign energy that tends to detract from your fire. And we are out of eclipse season, at least the main part, although you may see some eclipse news start to, or continue to roll in here. It's not, the climate of the month is very different than July. We are all about Leo this month. All of these planets are moving through Leo and they are kissing your Leo placements, enhancing everything that you're working on, everything that you want. We have Jupiter waking up and starting again to move into um, expansion of all the things that may have fallen into the backdrop since it's been in retrograde. There are a massive amount of happy surprises this month because of beautiful aspects, predominantly beautiful aspects in the stars this month. And my focus for this video is going to show you what areas of life are going to be smooched for the early, middle, and late degree Leo placements with these happy surprise potentials. We do have two days, two aspects to watch where there's going to be a little bit of a mischief or a little bit, a little bit of mischief or a little bobble, but there's plenty of potentials that can help to smooth out anything that comes and anything that comes will likely be short-lived if it's related to those aspects. Although those eclipse storylines can still be very much in process and those can be longer term. Definitely listen to my June horoscope for you if you haven't already because I talk about the July eclipses and where those are hitting because we're in eclipse season. June, July, August is really eclipse season and things can happen along those fronts at any time. So you can see more details about that in the June report that I have for you. But we're going to focus on happy surprises and I also have a special segment that is going to talk about transcending negative astrological patterning. So if you want to not just be a slave to the imprints that you've come to see are so true, the deeper you get into astrology, the more you see like, wow, it's all in there. So if you wanna break out of it, I have a special segment on understanding what you need to know and do in order to do that. And then you'll see me back on the screen and I will give you all of those sweet dates so that you can align your perfect pushes forward. This is one of the best months of the whole year for launches, for doing anything important, for major commitments, and for moving forward in any way. Awesome, awesome month ahead. I'm going to give you all the details now. Okay, so we have a very big month for Leos. A lot of the things I talk about will be true for early, middle, and late degree placements, but in the places where I differentiate, let's see where you're at. Early Leos are basically the July born or zero to nine degrees. Middle, August 1st through 10th or 10 to 19 degrees and late August 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees. If Leo is your moon sign or Leo is your rising sign, then this report is just as much for you as for the sun sign. The moon chart, the solar chart, the rising chart are all pieces of your complete picture um, for the month. And if you're watching for your moon or rising, you would just use the degree designations to figure out where you fit in early, middle, or late. So, as I mentioned, it's a month very much about Leo. All these planets in Leo, this Mercury is going to be there. So all of these planets either have recently or are about to move over and kiss your Leo placements. This enhances, amplifies, brings a massive amount of energy. The timing is really wonderful too because since Mercury is direct now, 
And since we have Jupiter waking up, and Jupiter has been making a beautiful trine, the best aspect in astrology to your placements, expansion is on the way in a big way. And as Jupiter wakes up on the 11th, Jupiter is going to start to bring more blessings, especially for Leo because it's a fellow fire sign. Also, as aspects with planets as they get into Virgo more towards the end of the month start to make a beautiful connection with the planet Uranus, these two factors are going to bring a ton of happy surprises for a lot of people. And so my focus for this month is on where in the chart you are more likely to see those happy surprises and what fields of experience they rule. So first, let's talk about birthdays. And do know if you're watching for your moon sign or your rising sign that the sun crossing over your placement, whether it's your sun or your moon or your rising, is a very auspicious time and is full of positive new energy for rebirth and positive change. So if it's your moon or rising, you're not being left out of this. But a special note for those of you for whom it's your birthday, the sun in the sky represents the things that you want, your desires. Each planet represents pieces of our experience and pieces of our personality and parts of the human experience. So the sun is the, is the desire sector and the creative creation sector. So when the sun in the sky gets back to the same point that it was at in the chart, which takes three, six, 365 days, it's a solar return, the universe is more receptive to your desires at that time. That's where birthday wishes come from. So definitely do a search for making wishes come true, Annie, and I will talk about more details about using astrological power periods for wishing. But just know that if you write down your 10 wishes, say them out loud, and feel them as if they've already come true, that will help you to um, boost the manifestation potential. Okay, so basically, I'm using the late chart here, but I am going to differentiate out here soon. Basically, the sweet aspects are occurring from 14 degrees of Leo to 6 degrees of Virgo. So that's the range. So as the Leo placements move in that spectrum and then move to the early parts of Virgo, especially a couple of them, you know, making this combination here, it's going to boost these potential for happy surprises. And there are at least 12 amazing aspects. So there are 12 aspects giving you opportunities for wonderful, happy surprises. The two dates of the month to watch out for, for little, little bobbles, I'm calling them, are around August 2nd and around August 16th. And that is when, first, right here at the beginning of the month, Venus is actually going to square Uranus. And then when Mercury gets to the same position, six degrees of Leo, it's going to square Uranus. So the Venus one is on the second, the Mercury one's on the 16th. And these can bring unpleasant surprises and unwelcome news and jostling and things that, you know, are not as favorable. But because there's such a predominance of positive connections, I am hopeful that any of the things that come up at that time will first of all be short-lived because, you know, the nature of Uranus is that it's fleeting energy and the nature of these personal planets is that they move quickly. So any jostling will probably be short-lived and also probably have more easy remedies, options for remedies with these other sweet aspects around. And I will give you a full listing of all of the dates of these sweet aspects when I talk about the general transits um, later in the video. Okay, so let's talk about the places that are going to be activated by these beautiful aspects. We'll start with early. We'll move over to middle and late. So you early degree placements, you have 14 degrees of Leo through eight degrees of Virgo in your first and second houses. So your happy surprises are going to be, and I'll make a little grid and we'll go into more detail about what this means. So your happy surprises are going to be here in the first, second, and 10th and fifth houses. Okay. Cause the aspects are with these planets. So let's start to make the grid 
So first, second, fifth, and tenth for early. Early. First, second, fifth, and tenth. And then we put middle and late right there. All right, so now middle degree placements. You're going to have 14 degrees through 8 degrees. Mostly focus in the first house, but you might get, so we'll put first for you, but you might get some whispers into the 12th house and possibly some whispers into the second house. We can see that you've got fifth as well and possibly fourth, okay, and then you guys have ninth and tenth. So the places for the blessings are more extended as far as the arenas of life that could be covered for the middle degree placements. Remember, we're going to talk about what all these houses mean and what the potentials are soon. I just want to lay out the grid to keep us organized. All right, so I'm having a little trouble getting, there we go. So the late degree placements, 14 degrees through 8 degrees is going to be 12th. It's definitely going to be first, it's going to be fourth, and it's going to be ninth. All right, so now as we talk about what all this means, you can see on there where you're at with this. When we have happy surprises in the first house, which all early, middle, and late degree are going to, this can have to do with your physical health, so health breakthroughs. This can have to do with recognition, people seeing you, and being in the limelight. This can have to do with positive, happy surprises, with your image. If you have to do something like get new clothes, take pictures for, um, you know, your work things, or um, get a, you know, do your hair different or anything like that. I love mid-August and after for that because this first house is very much your appearance as well. And as the Mercury retrograde energies fade towards the middle of the month, that would be a really good time for makeovers. And figuring out what you want to do with your life, like what you're, you know, what you want to show the world. Image could be in there too. All of those things could be happy surprises there. Okay, so for the early and middle, we've got money matters. Now, truth be known, since the planet Uranus is actually in the sign of Taurus, which rules the second house, everyone in the cosmos can have money-related happy surprises, and with those two aspects I talked about, challenges, but for the most part, happy surprises in the money sector. But the houses for early and middle are more um, focused on this month. So money, sustainability projects of any kind, self-esteem, so like raises. If you're asking for raises or you wanna raise your rates for your work, this would be an excellent month for that. And I love August 7th and beyond for raises, you know, rate increases, um, anything that has to do with asking for more for um, work that you're doing, going for big jobs, things like that. Okay, so middle and late degree placements, you've got the fourth house accentuated. So for you all, the home sector, housing, living situation, real estate, working from home, you know, home-based work, family things, childhood issues as they relate to adult situations, so childhood psychology, anything having to do with that, home, family, real estate, housing, happy surprises can come there. As I'm listing the happy surprises, know that we've got a couple of those possible jolts, but I'm still listing it as positive because I think the positive energy has more of a chance to counteract any challenges that come up. Okay, so now... Early and middle, you've got the fifth house accentuated. And really, every sign in the zodiac, including the late degree Leos, 
have the fifth house accentuated because Leo rules the fifth house and there's a ton of planets in Leo. But just straight from the house perspective, early and middle have extra energy here. But anything, as we mentioned before, children, creativity, romance, fun, bucket list stuff, hobbies, acting, being out in front of people, modeling, fashion, all of those things have a chance to boost. If you have a launch for your work, I love the second half of the month. And if you're in any of these fields that we're mentioning, um, that's even better. Okay, so middle and late degree placements. Oops, I was trying to write on there, I was erasing, there we go. Middle and late degree placements, ninth house is accentuated. And again, for everyone in the cosmos, since Jupiter is in Sagittarius, which rules the ninth house, this could be true, but there's extra potentials for middle and late Leos. For long distance travel, teaching, learning, you might find a perfect learning opportunity. And if it's something that's like no more than six months, even if the retrograde energies are present, you know, it's fine to move forward um, because it rules short-term agreements there. This could have to do with publishing, writing, speaking, spiritual work of any kind, any international business. If you are a Leo who wants to publish a book, this is one of the best months ever for that. If it's the first, first book and it's a book launch, I like the middle of the month and after. When we get to the part of the general transits where I list all the sweet aspects, Jiving with those dates can boost your launches. All right. Early and middle, you especially have work enhancement. Now, if you're a late degree person that has a job in any of the industries that we listed, then you'll, you'll catch this, not from the house, but for the, from these other placements. But career and work. So if you're looking for work or job opportunities this month is amazing and it has both the potential for old contacts or things from the past to come back and it has equal potential for brand spanking new stuff alrighty so for the middle and late degree placements we have possible happy surprises accentuated in the 12th house and this has to do with spiritual transformation psychological breakthroughs clearing up addictions, facing fears and conquering them, making a past life or other psychological discovery that rocks your world in a good way and opens you up to revitalizing positive change. And if you listened to my report last month, I talked about how when the planets crowd in the 12th house, actually, I guess I need to erase some of this to show you this better. Before it's birthday time every year, or before the sun crosses over your sun or moon, if it's, you know, in the placement that we're talking about, then the planets crowd in the 12th house. See the late, super crowded in there, um, even still this month, middle, still very busy in there. And for the early, that's dissipating because those are all in movement. Having the planets move through the 12th house before it's time for your renewal and revitalization and birthday wishes show you the things that you don't want, the stress. It can bring anxiety because, you know, your psyche, your psyche is extra busy. But the clearing and healing that you have from really working with this energy opens you up to be more clear about what you want to create. So there's, there's more of the, like, rebirth pushing forward for the early Leos um, and then there's a little bit of this pushing through the fear still for the middle and late degrees where you've got to confront these things, you know, fears and challenges that come up are great because they show us what is standing between us and the things we want. And that's what this time of the year is about when these planets get here. Okay. Now I have a very special segment about transcending astrological, negative astrological karma. Um, so if you're interested in seeing how you can get beyond astrological imprinting and even um, 
create more, have more positive experiences from the transits, then you will want to see this segment. If you're not interested in that, you can just fast forward until you see me back on the screen. And that's when I'll talk more about the general transits, including those positive dates to watch. All right, so let's look at the special segment now. Okay, welcome to my special section on transcending negative astrological patterning. This has been a focus of mine for the entire time I've been doing astrology, which has been almost two decades now. I have always gone into astrology as a self-development tool, understanding what's going on so that we can use the information to create the best experience from it. Now, the more you follow astrology and you start to see the amount of things that are true that you can see in there, both from your, your wiring and the things occurring in the stars, then you start to, some people will start to get a fatalistic attitude towards it and think, wow, since all of that's in there, I must be doomed to continue experiencing that. And for many people and in many instances, that is actually occurring <laughs> if you are not actively clearing the negative astrological patterning. There are a lot of there's a very complicated discussion as to what it is we bring in with us astrologically and where those pieces come from. But for this discussion, I'm going to focus on strictly the genes, the DNA, the genetics. Okay. So this has to do with our ancestry, our bloodline, and things we pull in genetically. Now, we don't just pull in medical issues genetically. We don't just pull in how we look genetically. I believe that we pull in belief systems. And as we are imprinted with these potentials in the, in the genes, we are then in a situation where nurture, you know, our environment can help to express those potentials or help to express different potentials. So, if you're feeling trapped in something that has been a pattern in your life, whether or not you also notice that that was a pattern in your genealogy, there are ways that you can get the better end of that. If there's something awesome program, programmed in, like you're a math wizard or a, you know, an artistic genius, then yeah, we want to keep that, right? But we're talking about the negative astrological patterning, these belief systems that are creating our reality a lot of times completely out of our awareness. And even when you start to become aware that it's in there and you're creating from it, the task of clearing it up is, you know, very rigorous self-development. But it can be done. Those subconscious programs have to be dealt with because those are creating the environment for your cells, for your DNA to actually express. So I want to talk about a scientist. His name is Bruce Lipton. He's a stem cell biologist. You can find Bruce Lipton on YouTube. You can get his book, The Biology of Belief. Okay, this is landmark stuff here. And it directly relates to astrology because astrology shows us genetics that basically that we come in with. And I'm seeing this more and more all the time. All kinds of genetic issues um, and genetic tendencies are being carried over. You can see them in the chart. Okay, so the biology of belief, you can find that to go deeper into this. But basically what happened... Okay, so I'll give you the story of, of what's gone on because this is going to help empower you with the, the goal of transcending negative astrological patterning to understand this from a scientific perspective. Okay, so the basis of the biology of belief is that genes do not control life. Okay, that's a big bomb, right? Big bomb. <laughs> so when Bruce Lipton was doing experiments that brought this epiphany, he was going into a cell and removing the structure called the nucleus. Okay, so the nucleus is the structure that contains the genes. So if genes control life and you throw away the nucleus, then there shouldn't be anything to control life in the cell, right? Okay. So he explains that there's a joke that the cells can live for two and a half more months with no genes at all, and they still carry out all of the complexities of life. 
move around, eat, breathe, you know, just they move, they move through life. So then the first thing you have to ask is who's controlling the cells if it's not the genes, right? So this is, this is a really big deal. Okay, so then the, the, big, the big boom for him came where he had, so basically he would put stem cells, isolate one stem cell and put it in a Petri dish. Okay, then it would divide every 10 hours and after a few days, he'd have thousands of cells. All right, so they're multiplying or dividing. So they all came from one cell, meaning they were genetically identical. So then he got to where there's like 10,000 cells in a Petri dish, okay? Then he would divide, separate out the cells into three Petri dishes. Okay, so he takes them from there and he puts them in there. Okay, so now these are genetically identical cells. Okay, this is the thing to note. Then what he did is he changed the growth medium. Okay, so the liquid in there, he changed, he made, so the cells are identical, but he changed the growth medium. Okay, so that's basically the constituents of the environment, all right? So these red and um, orange and green pieces or, you know, uh, matter here, that is representing different environments. Same cells, genetically identical, different environments. So then what happened was the first dish formed bone. The second dish formed muscle and the third dish formed fat. All right, so hopefully you're getting this, this is clicking, because this is like, it's mind boggling stuff. Identical, and then they formed all these completely different um, outcomes based on their environment. So what he is saying, and I, I concur, is that our environment is what is calling the shots. Now, of course, there are other factors and we could nitpick and look at, you know, and analyze and there, nothing is as simple as one way, right? There, but this is a huge piece. So this means that if we change our inner environment and uh, may, pay, be mindful of our outer environment, we can start to change how the astrological potentials manifest for us in the form of our life and our experience. Okay, it's very exciting. Okay, so a basic summary is the environment includes a massive amount of factors, and we won't get into them all now. But included in the environment is our perceptions, which are shown when we look at the astrology. When we're looking at a chart, all of the different placements in there, different signs and houses, it's, they're showing us a tendency towards perceptions tendency towards perceptions and even the outer transits when they're happening in the sky when planets are getting together certain configurations they tend to create us having a tendency towards certain perceptions a perception might be we're excited hopeful a perception might be we're like a victim and there's a tyrant, you know, so these different tendencies to have a perception, we can see those astrologically. So the tendency to have a certain perception is synonymous with karma. If we see something a certain way, we draw to us certain experiences. So basically changing perceptions changes karma and changes the DNA expression, which changes potentials, which changes outcomes. So we can basically have more say in our lives by changing our perceptions. Seeing how the perceptions we have 
are creating our experiences. And sometimes they're deep inner unconscious, subconscious perceptions. But you know you're having a certain perception because of the outcome. Like if you are having trouble with money, you know inside you have a perception that you can't earn money that you for whatever different reasons. You know, if you if you have a perception inside that you can't trust partners, well then you pull in people that aren't trustworthy. You know, things like that. So pinpointing perceptions, which you can do very nicely with astrology, shifting the perceptions with tools, like I always, you know, suggesting EFT and many other things um, help to change our, those perceptions. And that changes the environment, which affects the whole cascade. It's very empowering. <laughs> it does create a need for accountability, though. Like, our current circumstances are sourced within us and outside of us, but because that's part of the environment, but our inner environment, we can affect our perceptions. And then we can still change all of that. So you can see from all of this why I always talk about inner work and why I can't separate astrology from coaching or suggesting inner work and self-development because how you experience the stars is going to depend on your perceptions. And if you want to have a better experience, you have to change the perceptions. Well, then you have to use the tools to change the perceptions. And that goes from a victim mentality to true empowerment that we have the power. So you have the power. You have the power to change your life. You just have to be diligent, consistent with effective inner tools. I'm calling the theme of August 2019 for all signs, happy surprises abound. This is one of my favorite months of the whole year for sweetness and magic and wonderful things. There are way more sweet aspects this month than there are salty ones. And in fact, we really only have two little troublemakers that I'm most concerned about where everything else is just sweet. Now do note that because we are so soon after the eclipses that earth shaking eclipse news can still be coming in from July, but they're not coming in from the aspects in August. Those are carryovers from these major events in July. If you haven't already watched my June and July reports, then definitely check that out because there are pieces in there that are very relevant for this whole period of time. And in the June report, I go into the details about how each eclipse has, is, you know, worked your sign individually. So that's, I see those reports as a sister companion to this report as well. So this is a very unusual month. It's very rare that we have like at least 12 beautiful aspects and only two difficult ones. So we do, we do have a couple of things to look out for. So I'm going to go into those things. The first thing we need to know is besides the eclipse changes that are coming in and are starting to set foot, it, that's definitely still very current in August. If you had things come to you in July and you were holding off to officially sign or to officially put things into motion for the opportunities that came to you in July, I love the middle of August and after for that. Uh, there are some sweet days in the first half of August, but those are for more short-term contracts or ones of lower stakes. I am going to go into the dates that I love most for what here in a second, but just be aware that Mercury went direct right at the very end of July. So really at the beginning of August, we're very much covered in Mercury retrograde and really until August 15th, there's, you know, um, confusion or uncertainty or still ironing things out or kind of like temporary or bridge agreement type of energies. But it is a good time to wrap things up, um, but a lot of new things are also going to be coming in. So that's exciting. So the whole month is definitely very sparkly with zesty Leo energy. And this is burning bright with creative potential. This is, um, you know, a wonderful month full of the combination of zest from Leo and grounding Virgo. And whenever we have energy like that, it really helps us to be super productive because there are so many potentials crackling around, but then we also have this, you know, wherewithal and focus to do something about it. So it can really bring substance to that glowing creative potential. It's a truly magical time in the cosmos. So this is one of my favorite months of the whole year for taking big steps, for basking in glory of events that led up to come to fruition now. So basically for projects that have a shorter term intention, like a six to nine month project or something that is just a carryover of something you've been working on, 
August 7th, 8th, 11th, and 13th could be great for that. For the ones that you are doing like a major launch, big steps, life-changing decisions, long-term things, long-term commitments, my favorite dates are the 21st, the 26th, the 28th, the 30th, and the 31st. So you can also get um, a write-up of the dates, why I like the dates, what could happen around those times, and um, other things to look out for a month ahead in your inbox when you sign up for my free email newsletter. So when you go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, you will get my write-up a month before the actual month, so you can have a written version of my general transit report for you, plus you get my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine for free when you sign up for my free email newsletter. So you can check that out at AnnieHelpsYou.com. So drama and stress are more likely in the days around August 2nd and August 16th. Those are the only times where, and now, like I said, not to say that drama can't come from something in your personal chart. Our personal chart is something that we can't really take into consideration when we're looking at horoscopes because there are so many individual factors in your individual chart that we can't see in the horoscopes. But from the general horoscope perspective, it's very clear sailing. So I'm just going to point out the challenging ones. On August 2nd, we have this Venus in Leo squaring Uranus and Taurus. So even though the theme of this month is happy surprises abound based on all the sweet energy and also a lot of sweet aspects with Uranus, which is why I have the word surprise in there because Uranus tends to bring surprises. When it's in a challenging aspect, sometimes those surprises are not welcome. And this August 2nd one could be unpleasant or jostling, especially in the areas of money or love or your certainty within yourself. So definitely also guard your physical body with extra care and walk with more awareness, okay? Because it's more likely that something will come flying from a window when you're walking or, you know, that you just have to be pay more attention at this time and guard your physical body. And also just be aware that some bumps might come in that um, the areas of love and beauty and money. The second one that Again, is this is a, an aspect with Uranus. This energy is very much the energy of surprises. And if you've been watching my reports over the last few months, you'll notice I've been using the word surprise a lot. And that's because eclipses bring them in. Sometimes they bring in something that we've expected and hoped for. And in that way, it's not exactly a surprise, but when it actually comes to fruition, it kind of feels like a surprise. So, but then sometimes eclipses also bring in a surprises where we're like, ah, we don't really like that. But Eclipses have a similar energy to the planet Uranus, and Uranus brings in just like things out of the blue, you know, jolts to your nervous system. And sometimes those are happy jolts, like I said, when they're in sweet aspects, but when they're in these challenging ones, that's when you gotta watch out. So we have two of those challenging ones this month, the first and the second. First one is on the 2nd of August, and the second is on August 16th. Now, since that one on August 16th is energetically combined with the full moon in Aquarius, that could be, if, even though it's a positive full moon in a lot of ways, and I love it for a lot of reasons, this combination of this other aspect being near it is a mixed bag because you could have something sweet occurring at the same time as this surprise comes in. And since it's in Mercury, it rules news. It also rules mobility. So like being extra careful when walking and driving. And you know, this is the standard place where we warn, don't text and drive. Don't walk and text, don't be on your bike texting. Things where your physical body really needs to be minded more or other people's, this is a time where you don't wanna push your luck. So shocking news and other events are more likely. I have seen this manifest as a pleasant surprise, even though it's a difficult angle, but one that brings either exhaustion or um, some sense of like overdoing or like you're, you're being challenged in the way that something surprise has come in, but now you have to make room for it in an otherwise also very busy schedule already. So I have seen it manifest that way. But everything else is just sweet, 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 sweet. So those are the things that are most on my mind for the general transits. It's just a lot of sweetness. Definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Sign up for my free email newsletter. You'll get to see more details about why I like those days that I listed and what my, um, you know, why I think that they're amazing times for launches. So I go into like an itemized look at each day and each transit in that report. 
So if you love the way I teach and you want to learn astrology for personal or professional purposes, I can train you how to be a professional astrologer, and I can also assist you to just use it for yourself and your friends. You can check my program out, Astrology Apprenticeship Program, at AnnieHelpsYou.com. And if you like written horoscopes by me, you can go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com, and a month early I have up more simple, less detailed, but still very helpful because they're written and they've got very important pieces. And a lot of times I talk about different things for your sign than I talk about in the videos. So they're complementary in that way. So you can check those things out. Look at my book, RadicalPrayerBook.com, or you can just search for Annie Botticelli, Radical Prayer on Amazon. My wonderful little book of prayers and affirmations to help you live in your highest expression. You can see that at RadicalPrayerBook.com. And check out my husband's website, B.R. Newman, I am Helios, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com where you can see all the goodies and the things that he's getting himself into now that will be very helpful for you as well. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.